Like I was saying, it's FTX. It's a safe and easy way to get into crypto. Yeah, I don't think so. And I'm never wrong about this stuff. Never. Tonight, the cryptocurrency world is reeling after the meltdown of one of its most popular trading platforms. The exchange FTX filed for bankruptcy protection today has fallen. Crypto king Sam Bankman-Fried stepped down as CEO. CBS's Vladimir Dutier reports on this epic crypto collapse. We have uh, you know, a few billion on our balance sheet right now. We are profitable. We're in a relatively strong place from a financial perspective. I want to be doing something net positive, like with the, the making money part, like, like I, I want to be a good actor there. We've raised a few billion dollars over the course of the last, uh, last couple of years and we're a profitable business. Once the most respected man in the cryptocurrency industry, Sam Bankman-Fried was regarded as a pioneer in the space the creator of FTX, an exchange which became the world's second largest in only three years, Bankman Freed achieved success that was considered godlike in terms of how fast it was able to be realized. On top of this, Bankman Freed frequently lobbied for regulations that would protect consumers and would often bail out or acquire competitors, quickly turning FTX into a juggernaut in the industry. In a technological space that needed not only a leader with a clear vision, but also someone who advocated for the average retail consumer on the government level. At only 30 years old, Sam Bankman-Fried was considered to many a messiah. So, how did this man, who was able to grow a net worth of $26 billion in about three years, lose it all in a day? How could someone wipe out not only his own fortune, but also $10 billion of value from the FTX customers who entrusted him with their hard-earned cash? Stick around to the end of the video to find out. In 2017, Sam Bankman Freed was a fresh face on the cryptocurrency scene, often referred to by his initials SBF. A young entrepreneur and investor, he had a vision for what the cryptocurrency space could be, and he was especially good at talking to people about the importance of cryptocurrency to the world, and they would listen. Bankman Freed was born into academia, literally being born at Stanford University in an upper middle class family. Both of his parents studied law at Stanford. As a child, he excelled in mathematics and in 2010, he attended the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, graduating with a degree in physics and mathematics in 2014. After college, the young scholar secured a job at Jane Street Capital. In 2017, he moved to Berkeley and founded Alameda Research, a new quantitative trading firm. The trading firm specialized in arbitrage trading market making, yield farming, DeFi, and more. As 90% owner of the firm, Bakeman Freed was quickly earning up to $25 million per day by trading Bitcoin. He later decided to move his operations to Hong Kong. In April 2019, he founded his brand new cryptocurrency exchange, FTX. FTX quickly became a darling in the industry. It was known as the safest exchange in crypto. FTX is the safest and easiest way to buy and sell crypto. It's the best way to get in the game. Rapidly becoming a favorite amongst retail and venture capital investors. He lived in the Bahamas with a handful of roommates where FTX was newly relocated. Although he dressed like a college student, he spent lavishly on business expenditures like bailing out rival companies, marketing moves like renaming sports stadiums, and making Super Bowl commercials with high profile celebrities. He was also fond of donating large amounts of money to the Democratic Party and schmoozing with politicians. FTX even opened a separate arm in the US. Bankman Freed quickly rose to fame by becoming a lobbyist on behalf of the cryptocurrency industry, testifying before the Committee of Financial Services on Regulation. His soft-spoken, charming, and kind persona quickly won over the masses, and it wasn't long until he became viewed as not only a leader in the industry, but someone who was paving the path to help cryptocurrency fit snugly into the regulatory framework of the United States. Bankman Freed was able to calmly explain how the technology worked, why it was important, 
and how it would affect the world, along with what regulations were needed to truly protect consumers. When he would talk to legislators, he was patient and calm, and in return, they were genuinely curious and clearly showed a mutual respect for the young entrepreneur and what he was trying to build. Bankman Fried's persona was incredibly likable and you wanted him to win. You wanted to help him in his mission because he was so dedicated to helping you. Bankman Fried was someone who was on the retail trader's side, someone fighting the battle for the little guy who didn't have as big of a voice. Because he was actually the creator and CEO of a cryptocurrency exchange, he was able to truly understand the frustrations of consumers and appeared to sympathize with them when money was lost at the hands of bad actors. He was someone who was fighting the battles of retail traders and as a result, became the most trusted person in the industry. Not only that, Bankman Fried was viewed as a white knight. When his competitors would go belly up, he would often purchase their assets or provide emergency funding. After Voyager Digital had a meltdown in the spring of 2022, losing the funds of two and a half million customers, totaling billions, Bankman Fried made an offer to purchase the company for only $51 million after Bankman Fried's trading firm, Alameda, had lent Voyager $75 million earlier. At this time, Bankman Fried was on top of the world. Barely 30 years old, he had reached a peak net worth of $26 billion in only a few years, being considered by some as the next Warren Buffett, only second to Sean Peng Zhao, also known as or CZ, the founder and CEO of FTX's larger and older competitor, Binance, headquartered out of China. Binance and FTX were direct competitors in the crypto space, and besides other players like Coinbase in the United States, they were the first choice for a lot of people choosing to purchase and hold cryptocurrency for the first time. CC was also a well-respected CEO in the industry, as well as the richest man in crypto. He had built Binance out of a pure passion for Bitcoin in 2017, and it quickly became a hit with consumers because of its native token, BNB and native blockchain, the Binance Smart Chain. Consumers loved the Binance Smart Chain. Although it was essentially copying the framework of the Ethereum network, the fact that it used a centralized method of security as opposed to a decentralized consensus method made the Smart Chain faster and have cheaper transactions. Binance was also a seed investor in FTX and helped incubate the exchange in 2019. Like Binance, FTX also issued its own token called FTT, which utilized the Ethereum blockchain as an ERC-20 token. With FTT, a third of FTX trading revenue went to buying and burning the FTT token and also granted holders FTX marketplace trading discounts. Although they were competitors, Binance owned about $585 million worth of FTT. For the past three years, these two giants had been neck and neck competing to see who would be the leader in the space. What was equally incredible was how Bankman Fried had built FTX in the time span of three years to become the second largest cryptocurrency exchange in the world. At only 30 years old, Sam Bankman Fried had all the power, all the trust, and all the potential in the world. Everything seemed to be going fine until it wasn't. On November 2nd, 2022, cryptocurrency editorial Coindesk published the leaked balance sheets of Alameda Research. The balance sheet showed that Alameda Research was actually holding a large amount of FTT token, which was created and controlled by its sister company, FTX. Of the $14.6 billion managed by Alameda Research, almost $6 billion was in FTT, along with overexposure to projects like Solana and Serum in which Bankman Fried was a co-founder of the latter. Although not technically illegal, this was a huge red flag. If Alameda and FTX had almost $15 billion in user funds managed, why was most of it being held in a security being controlled by Bankman Fried as opposed to another security or fiat currency? Binance CEO CZ had the same question. A few days later, CZ logged onto Twitter and announced that his company would be selling their holdings of FTT after learning new information regarding Alameda Research's balance sheet. 
CZ went on explaining that the selling off of FTT was just risk management. However, there is some speculation that CZ was doing this as a result of Bankman Fried's constant cryptocurrency lobbying in the US, which was ultimately hurting Binance's business as it is headquartered in China. This caused the FTT token price to plummet, immediately falling from about $25 to $2.50 in the blink of an eye. Bankman Fried had lost 90% of his fortune in less than a day. In damage control mode, Alameda Research's CEO, Caroline Ellison, tweeted that there were $10 billion in additional assets that were not included in the report, but failed to mention what they were. Right after CZ's announcement, she also offered to purchase Binance's FTT back for a discounted price of $22, but the Binance CEO declined. FTX was in a liquidity crunch as investors were racing to pull their capital off of the platform. As a result, FTX had to lock withdrawals, thus making the news even more widespread. FTX was once regarded as a savior in the industry. In exchange, smaller exchanges would look to for emergency funding in times of need. But now that FTX was in trouble, there was only one real player who could save them. Soon after, CZ wrote a letter of intent to purchase the FTX exchange and Alameda Research, but said that Binance would need some time to do some much needed due diligence, and a deal would not move forward until this was complete. For a short time, it seemed as if everything were going to be all right, withdrawals would be resumed, and customers would be protected. However, less than 24 hours after the announcement, CZ decided to back out of the deal, citing, our hope was to be able to support FTX's customers to provide liquidity, but the issues are far beyond our control or ability to help. If the deal had gone through, the two largest cryptocurrency exchanges in the world would have combined in a merger that would have shaken up the industry. But less than 24 hours of due diligence left Binance walking out the door, which was the biggest red flag yet. What was FTX hiding? Later. It had been announced that the thing that scared Binance and CZ away from the deal was actually worse than Alameda Research's overexposure to its own token, FTT. The problem was that Bankman Fried had always asserted that FTX did nothing with user funds except held them. The funds weren't moved nor were they invested. However, the truth that was uncovered later revealed that FTX had been taking users' assets and lending them to Alameda Research, the sister company of FTX, which was 90% owned by Bankman Freed. Alameda was using FTT as collateral for these loans and then taking those funds and making risky bets in the cryptocurrency space. These bets weren't released because of the lack of transparency, but could have been anything from DeFi to yield farming to swing trading. These bets ultimately went bad, most likely because of the macroeconomic conditions surrounding the bear market at the time. Bankman Freed had finally revealed to investors that Alameda Research owed FTX $10 billion. $10 billion that had been entrusted to the exchange by everyday, hardworking retail investors. Of the $16 billion worth of capital entrusted to the exchange by investors, more than half of it was gambled away in the risky, tumultuous, unforgiving environment that is the field of decentralized digital currency. On top of this, FTX owed an additional $1.5 billion to other firms as well, and customers were attempting to pull out $5 billion worth of their collective funds. It was later revealed that all of that money was being managed by a small handful of people in the Bahamas. It was known that FTX was operated out of the Bahamas, but it was unknown how small the team was, and that most of them were in romantic relationships with one another, including Alameda Research CEO Caroline Ellison and Bankman Freed. After the news of the missing funds broke, the Security and Exchange Commission quickly got involved, freezing the assets of FTX. On November 11, 2022, Sam Bankman Fried announced that he had filed FTX, FTX US, and Alameda Research for voluntary Chapter 11 bankruptcy proceedings in the US, that Alameda Research was shutting down, and that he was resigning as CEO of FTX. Because FTX operated as crypto's white knight, often offering emergency funding for multiple custodians who were in financial trouble. Companies like BlockFi were suddenly in hot water. 
BlockFi was expected to possibly be acquired by FTX for $240 million in 2023 as a result of its involvement in the Celsius debacle that happened in the spring of 2022. Because of FTX's situation, BlockFi announced to users that they also needed to freeze withdrawals. A string of other companies also had large exposure to FTX, including Multicoin Capital, Sequoia, Paradigm, and more. It still remains to be seen how far this house of cards will fall, all because of one man. All in all, the choices of Sam Bakeman Freed hurt more people than almost anyone's single choices in financial history. Sam Bankman Freed, the entrepreneur who once had a net worth of $26 billion, who had lobbied on behalf of the industry for regulation that would protect consumers, who had created the cryptocurrency exchange that was once considered the safest in the industry, and who was once compared to Warren Buffett, and who was now being more closely compared to Bernie Madoff. As of the time of this recording, Sam Bankman Freed is under intense investigation by the Department of Justice and Securities and Exchange Commission and his net worth is effectively zero. We have seen this time and time again. Someone makes a tool that helps others onboard onto crypto easier, and because they fill a market need, they get wealthy very quickly and gain immense influence. As a result of this, greed takes over, poor judgment, and the scale of the decisions is far more overreaching than the person is able to comprehend. Then, millions of people are left picking up the tab, for the poor decisions of a handful of people are oftentimes one person. This is just another stain on the legacy of cryptocurrency. The road has always been bumpy, and there is no promise that it will get smooth anytime soon. But the industry will continue to move forward, and always remember Sam Bakeman Freed as an example of why you should not put too much trust into any one entity to have custody over your digital capital, no matter how trustworthy they may seem, which is precisely why crypto was created in the first place. And always remember, not your keys, not your crypto.